Mine too. The defining chapter. Meteor shower! Meteor shower? In the greatest trilogy. The mother of all asteroids screaming towards us. But I've got a plan. Who's with me? Crash and Eddie reporting for duty. <laughs> duty. <laughs> of all time. All I wanted is true love. Everybody has somebody. And all I've got is my boyish good looks in this mariachi bed. I ain't say we on number five. Five. They finally got it right. They fi- uh, I did they. <laughs> That's right. 14 years. 14 years scrap been chasing that acorn. And, th- and, and every time he's al- he almost has the acorn, never gets it. But when he, almost, when he almost has it in his grasp, he's destroying something. He's caused another ice age. He's caused the dinosaurs to almost go extinct. This time, he's about to kill all life on the planet because he finds the acorn in a spaceship <laughs> ends up i know it sounds crazy he ends up the, he's he pulls a lever two presses some buttons all of a sudden the galaxy is created but then in the middle of it we have a piece of huge rock 30 miles wide about to uh, i'm sorry 300 miles wide about to crash land on planet earth and kill all of our good friends that we've come to know throughout the Ice Age movies. Sid, Diego, Manny, and all their girlfriends and children have come across in these films throughout the times, and we're about to lose them all unless, unless they can band together and prevent this asteroid from hitting the planet. And this is serious, Martin. Don't laugh. Some serious shit. And I, <laughs> Marcus, I want you to take this shit seriously now. Shut up. Yeah, you're a college boy. Yeah, you're a college boy. You, you know learn, all the science shit and everything. Learn about the origins of the universe. It was Scrat. <laughs> <laughs> Spaceship. No, no. We, we discovered that, that Scrat is actually an alien life form. Mm. Is it? Well, think about it. His, that spaceship he, he's in, it kicks off the Big Bang where the Earth is formed. So he couldn't have come from the Earth to begin oh, with. Oh, hell. I thought you had something profound, some, some shit to say. It's funny because... that's what... You know, it's funny That's because when kids see this, you know, they're going to be writing that shit on, their, on the exam. Oh, yeah. How was the <laughs> earth created? Scrap. <laughs> but kind of like Mojo on crack a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you broke his nose. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, now, I, I have to say that, all right, you know something? They, they, I, I'm just going to come right out and get to the point. They don't know what to do with these characters anymore. I mean, these are what they're doing now are pretty mundane subplots with these characters. I mean, they, they, when I say mundane, I'm talking about like I'm talking about like sitcom subplots because they don't know they, they don't know what else to do with these characters here. Like Manny forgets his anniversary. Manny doesn't like his future son in son in law when uh when his daughter Peach is about to get married. Uh, Manny voiced by what's his name? Ray, Ray Morano. Morano. Ray Morano and Kiki. What's her, what's her name? Kiki, Kiki Palmer. Palmer. Kiki Palmer. Yeah, uh, it's Peaches. Like, it's like they basically had a bunch of leftover. Everybody hate. Uh, everybody loves Raymond scripts and just said like, you know what? We can make an Ice Age movie yeah. out of this. Just smash <laughs> together with House of Pain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just put talking animals in there. I mean, it's, it is the same shit. I mean, it's uh Sid is trying to get a girlfriend. And the funny thing about it is that all these subplots that they have for these characters that they introduce them with, it doesn't matter because a fucking asteroid is about to hit and they all drop everything. You know, they may mention it here and there, but they all drop everything to save the planet. And with these subplots, too, it's not making some of the characters that I don't like all that much any better. Sid is a character that I was cool with Sid for a while. Voiced by John Leguizamo. I was all right with him. I was like, all right, it's just one movie, whatever. But now we got five fucking movies with Sid. And Sid is not. Sid is the same stupid ass character that he was. Got that same stupid ass lisp. And now in this film right here, they try to make him a little more sympathetic because he got he gets his heart broken. But still, Sid is the same old Sid. And he's getting on my nerves. You're the wind beneath my fleas. The algae of my eye. Will you be? I'm going to stop you right there. I'm breaking up with you. What? But I planned our whole future. Our wedding, our kids, our burial plots. How you doing? Are you crazy? We've only had one day. It lasted 14 minutes. Yes, but it felt like 20. Ugh, I can't. A ring? I mean, I like the ring, but no, I can't. You're too clingy. How is this clingy? 
Yeah, good luck, sweetheart. We've been trying to get him up our backs for 10 years. Well, damn, Corey. Yeah, Mr. Spoiler, you just showed the funniest scene in the whole movie. <laughs> I disagree with you on that. I, just, I, I do not think that that's the funniest scene in the movie, and I will elaborate on that in a little while. And, the, you know, the thing about Sid is that you knew that they were trying to have Sid be like their, their popular merchandising character. You know, Sid was supposed to be the, the funny one that broke out. And, and kids don't even, kids are cool with Sid, but they don't really like Sid. They tolerate him. They tolerate Sid. You know, they'll laugh. He'll, you know, he'll say butt or doo-doo or something every now and then. Kids will laugh. But really, how many, how many kids do you know? How many little girls do you know walking around with, with Sid dolls? You know, with Sid toys? Well, because well, Sid is like that, that kid with ADD that hangs around. And you don't want to be mean to him. You don't want to get accused of bullying. But you don't like him. But no, you don't like him. Kids don't even want to buy that shit. I dare somebody give a Sid doll to a little girl. She's like, fuck this. You better get me a minion. You know, <laughs> take this back. <laughs> Kids don't even want to be bothered with Sid. The, but I, I, the, 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 some of the characters that I do like in the movie, and I do like some of them. I, they, they, they come from other films, and now they're trying to put them in this too, which can be a problem, which I'll talk about in a minute. But one of the characters that I like, I, didn't even, <laughs> I don't even remember this character. It's uh, Buck. Yeah, the weasel. The weasel, mm -hmm. voiced by Simon Pegg. I also have another movie coming out this weekend, Star Trek. But Buck, I like Buck. But Buck is, uh, and there you see Buck right there. You'll see him a little bit better when I play this clip. But Buck is, Buck is cool. But Buck is so spastic that you can tell that these animators, these animators, want to make a Looney Tunes cartoon so bad. Yep. Yeah, especially that introduction scene for him. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's nothing but like a. a a more mentally unstable Bugs Bunny because I mean, right? And I'm not even lying. Like That's he's true. Yeah. like he's uh because you can even see. I mean, for anybody who's familiar with uh, with Looney Tunes cartoons. I mean, even the way you're right, the way they introduce him, they introduce him with Figaro. You know, that's that's a popular song that a lot of us know from Looney Tunes. I am the poisonous protector of this lost world, but my friends call me Buck. Well played, guys. I have a message. Well, it's not welcome. Return what you've stolen. Go back where you came from. La 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 la. You know I'm greater, so don't be a hater. You may be Jurassic, but I am fantastic. You know, just. Stop giving these animators shitty scripts and let them work on a Looney Tunes cartoon. Man, actually, with, that was actually one of the scenes I enjoyed because I was like, I really like. It wasn't for like the the you know that Sim singing Figaro. It's like, all right, this is a long shot and it's an actually an entertaining action scene. You know what? With, with, with a lot of chore choreography, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and I would give you that because mm -hmm. I like the artwork in here. Yeah. I like the animation. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking they, they just had a better script with some of these things. That the the technical aspects are there. Well, it seemed like we had one movie going on. And then it stopped to become the Buck versus the Dinosaurs movie. Yeah. And then they found some way to put those together. And it, it just had this feeling like, it seemed like y'all just want to do just a Buck, and, a Buck movie by itself. They, these animators want to either do a Buck cartoon or they want to do a Looney Tunes cartoon. They do, they, it's, they have, and it took three people to, uh, to write this script. And you can tell that these animators, wow. I know. Three? They should three. be taken out and shot. <laughs> three. 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 They must have been dumb as fuck because yeah, you know what I mean. Each one wrote ten pages and walked away. Yeah, <laughs> and I didn't mean they're dumb. They just got a paycheck. They just—I mean, come on, you know. It's, I know they—they they probably were like, "Look, it's Ice Age Five. What do you want from us?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're out of ideas. <laughs> I mean, the only reason why it took three people to work on it because one scriptwriter said, "Man, here, you take this shit. I'm tired of this. I got better things to do." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I and, and I really would like to see these animators work on something that they would enjoy. I have to say, I'm not really—I'm not really uh, crazy about frantic spastic characters all the time but i like this character right here and i would like to see them work on a new generation of bugs bunny or looney tunes type thing or, or a new looney tunes universe or something that's similar y'all give me a call i've been talking to i've been talking to lebron james we're gonna get space jam 2 going <laughs> <laughs> uh I, you know the saving grace for me in this movie and i'm not saying that it's completely rescued the film but it it is it it it, it gets weird it starts out as being one of those children's uh, uh, movies where it's, you know, they're, they're making fart jokes, they're making poop jokes, they're being loud, they're talking brood, uh, uh, dude, a uh, bro talk. Mm -hmm. You know, what's his name? What, uh, from, uh, we just saw him and Mike and David had wedding dates, or need wedding dates. Dave Franco? D Divine. Oh, Adam Divine. Adam oh, Divine. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, he's a... Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the son in law. Uh, the son in law, and he's like, hey, bro, dad, what's going on? You, what, your daughter's babylicious, you know, and all that kind of shit. It's, 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 it's the shtick he does every, every yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. But 
right when I'm about to give up on it, and I'm not saying it's the best thing, but the movie just gets weird. They find a, they get to a point where they find a comet that's already landed that's attracting the one that's in the sky, and the comet turns into this fountain of u- utopia for a bunch of animals that's led by uh, a llama. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, hang with me. <laughs> and, uh, <I'm laughs> Everybody like, and check that out. Yeah. <laughs> There's a point where you just kind of stop going, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you like you said it so many times. I'm like, I'm just repeating myself. Here. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, you're gonna try to make sense at this point out of anything. Let us loosen our limbs and open our minds. Down, my dog. Oh, uh, seriously? I'll wait. I have all the time in the world. Uh, yeah, Martin don't like that. <laughs> Martin, where's the elephant? Uh, yeah, where, <laughs> y'all, y'all remember Zootopia? Martin said, "Where's the elephant, vagina? Where's the elephant? Where's the elephant asshole?" Way down. Oh. <laughs> Martin was like, "Hey, I want, I want some elephant vagina." Hey, now that uh, that cat asshole don't look so bad now, does it? <laughs> From uh, Secret Life of Pets. Uh, told you that was a groundbreaking film right there. I, I look at this and uh, you know. It's just it's it's kind of done. I mean, we have five of these movies, and they're really running out of things to say. And <clears throat> what I what I do admire the film on or any of these films is that they managed to find a premise to create another movie. I mean, you know, they've really they meant. And I'm not look. I'm saying the execution is not that great, but the, but the premise, like. You know they do a lot with the with the with the Ice Age. First it was Ice Age, and then there was uh, you know the continents breaking apart, right. dinosaurs. This we have the, uh, the, the 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 what do you call it? The comet coming down, and you have you have the 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 story there or the premise. You have a jumping point. I, you can make ten of these if you could keep coming up with different things to do, but you just nev- they never have the content for it. They never have the material to match that. You don't have enough to work with, and I think it's because they don't know what kind of movies that they want to be. You know what? Uh, the, the main problem being that they're taking pieces from you know there's five movies now. They're trying to take pieces from every film and put them in uh, in each movie, and it's becoming a little bit crowded, becoming a little bit overstuffed. And I think that's why this film, and you have people like Nick, Nick Offerman. I don't have a clip of him, yeah, but he's mm-hmm. one of the dinosaur birds that's chasing the, the buck. Uh, you, 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 they don't use him well. Yeah, they, they wasted Nick Offerman in this. Like, I've seen him do uh, voiceovers for other animation. It's like, oh, wow, he did a really good job. I couldn't even tell it was him. But in this one, you can tell it's him, and just the lines of dialogue that he's given are yeah. god-awful. Yeah, Nothing. yeah I, I, I don't. <clears throat> I don't be you know look I'm not saying that they can't do these anymore but if you do, I don't know if they're going to stop it's going to depend on how the box office is if it's big and they make money then uh, this is a moot point right here there's no use in even mentioning it but if they ever decide to do anything further with this I would implore them to like really take advantage of the premise that they have and stop appealing to the lower the lower base of uh, of their audience I mean you know that it's 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 down to just having funny faces and making bathroom jokes and uh, just yelling out something that they loudly because that'll get that'll get kids to laughing there's really no substance in these films and I and, it, and it's beginning to show it's wearing very thin after five films Martin uh, yeah, everything you just said, except harsher. Uh, it's it's just it's too much. It's 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 a weird combination of being too much and too little at the same time. It's too many characters. It's too many plots, but none of them are are fleshed out. It's like they had a group of writers who wrote down ideas for sequels to come, and yet since nobody could flesh it out, they just decided to put all of it in the same movie. And it just wears you out, especially trying to figure out what is this really supposed to be. And usually, even with the with these movies, with the ones that I don't care for that much, they still manage to do fun stuff with Scrat. Not this time. Uh, I mean, it goes off the rails right off the bat. And then all the stuff they did with Scrat after that, it's like, this isn't even funny. It, there's no real humor in it. it you, you've, uh, you've depleted whatever was there. And sure, there's some moments with Chuckles, or especially when it gets weird. I mean... When it, it does get weird in a way where I go like, wow, I've always wanted a movie that's going downhill to just say, completely say fuck it and lose its mind. So I sort of appreciated that, but not really. All right, sir. 
y'all left me scraps because <laughs> this movie here, man, God, I, with this, it's it's what I said when we walked into it. I was like, this is going, this is slowly becoming the new Land Before Time franchise where mm-hmm. they just keep coming out with movies and you know they ran out of ideas and you gave me a great retort. You said, hey, but those go straight to DVD. Like, we don't have yeah. to see those. Yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, we have to see this. Uh, like Martin said, scrap... Usually he's the one that when you say Sid's supposed oh, to be you're the, making the, him cry, man. Fuck, fuck that squirrel. Oh, 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 why are you doing that? Man? <laughs> no, man. I, no, I, no, I don't appreciate you anymore, Scrat. Like he was the face of the franchise. Like uh-huh. you saying Sid was the one being put up there. It was him. And like with this, they like, oh, we ran out of ideas. He's not between the continent. He's not in a volcano. We're just gonna throw him in space and let him have fun with that. Um, I one thing I, I'll give a positive for. I did like the animation with it, especially when they introduced Buck. I love that scene. Um, and I thought Buck was fun because I think he was the one that was uh, played by Simon Pegg was the one that was just like, all right, man, I know this is stupid. I'm just gonna say some stuff and hopefully you go along with it. And then you had you know little pop ups from uh from you know. I don't know if it's out there or not. Neil deGrasse Tyson being somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they they, t- they talked about that. Neil deGrasse Tyson has been making cameos in shitty films lately. Zoolander yeah. and this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess this counts too. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, he's, he is one of the funniest parts of the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, with But outside of that, it was just, it felt like they just threw stuff at a wall and whatever stuck. They're like, all right, we'll go with that. This seems like something that could have been done better if they wanted to and wanted to put some real love and effort into it. I think they could make this a, a TV show. I, I, don't th- I don't think seeing this as a movie, it, it, it's, it's run its course. If they want to make this uh, an extension or keep this universe going, bring it to TV or put it on Netflix. Yeah. You know what? What, you rent, what, you, what are you giving? Oh, man, this... Uh, God, I was torn between a some old bullshit and a rental, and I'm going to go with the some old bullshit. No, man, come on, man. Buck. Do it for Buck. Give nah. it a rental for Buck, man. You Buck, love Buck. Buck. Buck didn't save this dude. Like he, <laughs> one scene does not save a movie from this right because this not, was, man, come on, we saw this. I wouldn't even do it for Buck. No, nah, we, dude. When we went and saw this after we were done, it was like, well, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was tired. That's why. Man, no, nah, this, <laughs> this this movie it was. It, Kid, this, this is something that you would put on for like toddlers because they'll they'll be entertained by the bright lights and the flashing colors, but they're not gonna remember any of it afterwards. And that's what it is. This is a distraction. I wouldn't even tell somebody to go out and rent this when you could put on other distractions for your kids at home. So yeah, with this man, this is this is rough. This is some old bullshit to me. Wow, um, I I I I don't know. I kind of have a rule that I just don't won't give a kids film. Or a family film, uh, uh, lower than a rental because it's it's is there to entertain the children, um, but I'm breaking it today because this is some old bullshit. This this movie it's just a bunch of loud colors and nothing else. I mean the thing is, it made me think. Remember back to when I did like Ice Age, at least the first one, mm-hmm. and and whichever one had the pirates in it. I think that was a fourth one. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, oh how they found a way that's to pull this out in a way. Buck is from. I is think, he from that one? No, I don't know. I think he's from the, the, <laughs> the dinosaur third one that I never yeah, saw. Yeah, the dinosaur one. Yeah, but with this, <laughs> I was like, wow. It, it made me hate that, uh, that I ever liked him at all. Damn. Damn. <laughs> yeah. That's some bullshit, huh? Yeah, some old bullshit. Oh, yeah. hell. Here we go again, people, because. Look at your full price. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't give it a full price, but I disagree with some points on you guys real quick. Uh, I, I personally like Scrat in this movie. I, I, I'm sorry, but Scrat. The thing about I see y'all hate Scrat because y'all don't like the movie, and Scrat has always been held back from these films. Scrat has never been able to like achieve his full potential or uh, his talent because these movies always introduce him in these funny shorts and these sketches. And I like I like, even like this. I like that they put him in a spaceship now. I like that he. I always like to set up that Scrat is the one that causes all this destruction, and they never and the characters never meet him. I always thought that that was a great idea. Never reached the full potential, like I said. But Scrat is, if they really made Scrat, put him in the right place, and I agree with you probably on television, mm-hmm. Scrat could be the Wile E. Coyote, and that acorn could be the roadrunner for this age right here. I like Scrat. I thought Scrat was funny here. And I also, I don't, I'm not fun of the movie, as you could tell. But I do like the, some elements of it. You know, like you said, I like the I like the animation. I like the design. I like some I like how crazy the movie got at one point. A little bit too late, but do I think that it's a total loss? No, I think that it's worth the rental. I mean, if you rent it and give it to some kids and they they watch it. I th- I know teenagers who still like Scrat out there. So, you know, I I am not going to you know. <laughs> this will be the movie that'll turn them against. <laughs> uh, Scrat, I got you, man. And this this I'm uh, this is a rental. You do Corey, thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, I got much. you, brother. I got you, man. I ain't going to hurt you like these guys did right here. I it, it's a rental to me. It's a low rental and they need to stop and 
you're exactly right. They need to put this on television. Mm-hmm. Put it on. Put it on on Netflix or or Nick uh, Nick Tunes or just, whatever. Just some scratch shorts in between that's cartoons. What, yeah, that's what I exactly. Ex- that's what we'd be. That's what I'd be happy with. Just some scratch shorts. And that's it. We all these other characters, they can make an appearance every now and then. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm okay. For somebody, <laughs> I agree with you on that. I am. I'm, I'm not gonna be greedy. <laughs> from somebody that's only seen one and two, I have no idea what happened at three and four. So coming into this, I was so lost. I was like, why? Who is Kiki Palmer? And like, I'm assuming that's Queen. He met Queen Latifah in yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. From, I think they meet in two. I don't know, yeah, I don't man. Know. <laughs> How many have you seen? Two of them. Two of them. Which ones did you see? The first and the second. First and the second. So you didn't see the third one? No. You didn't see the fourth one where Scrat went to rehab? and. <laughs> 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 Apparently it failed him because he's a mission. <laughs> yeah, he's, man, he relapsed. <laughs> <laughs> Fell off the wagon, man. That acorn train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the fourth one, they meet a bunch of wild mammals traveling on an ice pirate ship. And as crazy as that sounds, it was funny. And mm-hmm. Peter Dinklage was the main pirate captain. Mm-hmm. They did some funny stuff with it. But here they just they couldn't pull it out. And then he calls me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you gave this a rental. You are crazy. Yeah, you are crazy. <laughs> hey, you act like I gave this a full price or something. Man, fuck you tried to. You about to? <laughs> People, I, you just take notice of this tonight. They, they they're ganging up on me. That's nah, all they're doing. Just saying <laughs> dumb shit. No, see, they, you see, they can't be fair. This is why you know. This is why I'm scared to get my opinion sometimes. <laughs> You we see just switched up the order that we gave our ratings, <laughs> and then they still ended up exactly. the same. Yeah, it's all right. It went like we let you go first and then jumped on it's you. It's all right. It's all right. This is character building right here. This is all right. For you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> y'all not gonna y'all not gonna bring me down. <laughs> go home and play with his scrap plush. <laughs> <laughs> I am. They don't understand you like I do. <laughs> Come on, Mojo, chase the acorn. <laughs> no, you're not doing it right. <laughs> I'm just gonna give Mojo some crack and have him look like that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to Corey I'll suck your dick <laughs> oh man this shit is <laughs> Mia don't like me messing with her baby look at that <laughs> <laughs> funky chicken bouncing Betty mashed potato hey this is kinda easy <laughs> could you help me please my nose is dangerously close to my butt this is the moment. Osage Collision Course <laughs> <laughs>